I'm here with Clorox Chairman and CEO, Ben O'Dora. Ben, always good to talk with you. Uh, it's been quite the month from a, a consumer standpoint. I imagine quite the month uh, as the CEO of Clorox. When I go into these Target and Walmart stores, I still can't find a lot of the disinfecting wipes I'm, I'm looking for. What are you seeing in your manufacturing plans right now? Yeah, so I can identify with that. So if you go to stores, we're shipping to stores every single day, but uh, what we're shipping is pretty much scooped right away. So it's gone after a few minutes. But, you know, clearly there's a, an unprecedented uh, demand spike for some of our products, in particular wipes. We've seen spikes of up to 500% in terms of demand, and no supply chain in our industry is built to satisfy that uh, demand increase in a short period of time. So what are we doing? Um, we have significantly increased our own production. We've done so by simplifying our lineup, which allows uh, our lines to run faster. We're churning out 40% um, more product uh, last quarter than we did in the previous year quarter. We're activating third-party suppliers who produce for us, who are helping us. And we're investing in further capacity. So we continue to find new ways to speed up our lines and find capacity. And we think that there's going to be a substantial improvement this summer. Uh, it's going to be touch and go until then, unfortunately, but uh, help is on the way. Um, and uh, things should e ease up in the next few months. What does investing in capacity uh, look like for a Clorox? I imagine you can't build a plant overnight. When you do that, what does it mean? Yeah, time is the enemy, right, clearly. So there's multiple steps. So uh, we are investing in additional third parties. We are investing in uh, ways to optimize our existing lines. So within our current buildings and our uh, current lines. So we're continuing to find creative ways to um, uh, uh, increase uh, uh, production capacity. But then we have already made strategic investments, which are not going to help this summer, but are going to help us be more prepared next time when we need it in 12, 18 months um, by investing in new infrastructure that hopefully will be online then. Uh, ben, uh, one thing that stood out to me uh, in your earnings call, which you just had, uh, you noted there has been some price gouging out there in the marketplace, and you're working with law enforcement. What are you seeing out there? Is this price gouging still going on, or was it more of uh, it was occurring in March and April when, when everybody was stocking up? There was an issue early on, but it's gotten a lot better. I see very little now. I check every single day, and I... Uh, don't find anything right now. So to be very clear, we do not condone price gouging. We want to make sure that consumers at all times are able to buy our products at the regular prices, especially during this time at the pandemic, it's particularly important. Uh, our customers also sell at regular prices. So we're talking about independent third-party sellers, and we have worked with major online retailers to get them offline. We've also worked along with our industry association, the Consumer Brands Association, involving the Department of Justice uh, to help get people offline. And that's been uh, working. Uh, we're continuing to uh, monitor the situation. We're continuing to get people offline. Every now and then it keeps popping up. But I would say it's no longer a broad scale issue. No, that's, uh, that's certainly good to hear. You know, I was, uh, I was looking back at one of the interviews we did in, in 2017, uh, and we were talking at length about patents for Clorox products. You know, given this environment, can you still move forward really quickly with innovative new products, or you just have to focus on some of the core competencies of Clorox? No, innovation is key, and innovation is the backbone for our Ignite strategy. Our Ignite strategy is about a year old, and the, 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 the lifeblood of everything we do in our products, in our brands, in our work, is innovation. So what our team is doing, I would say at this point, is about 30% deal with uh, the pandemic, and that keeps everybody busy plenty. But about 70% is really in thinking through what the long-term implications are. And as we get into a recession, innovation continues to be more important than ever. As we think about the future of disinfecting and finding new ways to serve consumers uh, in the pandemic and beyond, innovation is going to be vital. So our innovation organization continues to focus on the long term, continues to focus on innovation because we have to look at 18, 24, or 36 months down the road and be prepared to continue to succeed once hopefully the pandemic will be all but a memory. What does a, a new disinfecting product look like for Clorox 36 months down the line? Uh, do they have to be more powerful? What's that, that need you're seeing in the marketplace that you have to address? 
It's difficult for me to anticipate what's going to uh, happen th uh, 36 months down the road, in particular in a public setting, because as you know, innovation is something that uh, we keep very close uh, to the vest. But typically our innovation process looks at uh, consumer needs that are unmet, looks at emerging consumer needs, and then translates that into technologies and consumer propositions that are new and differentiated. And right now what we're seeing is that a lot of new people are engaging with disinfecting products. That's the phenomenon that we're dealing with right now that uh, the spike in demand that we're seeing is not people stockpiling at home, but new people engaging with disinfecting products and people engaging with disinfecting products in new and expanded ways. And that's really the ground for new consumer insights and we translate those consumer insights into um, new technologies. So expect a lot of innovation to come uh, in the future in the next 36 months in the disinfecting space. You know, another sentence that jumped off to me on the earnings call was, it sounded as, as though you were looking to get a little more aggressive internationally. Uh, and I bring that up because you have taken a measured approach uh, to Clorox International, but the bottom line is this pandemic is a, is a global uh, health crisis and the next crisis might be global as well. Clearly, uh, international is about 15% of our sales, but it's growing really strongly, 22% in currency neutral t uh, terms in sales last quarter. And a little over half of our international business is in disinfecting. So as we're seeing more consumers engage uh, with disinfecting products in the US, the very same thing is true in international, which gives us an opportunity to serve more consumers internationally, and we'll invest behind that. How do you think the pandemic uh, will change the future of Clorox? Is it higher sales growth? Is it more is it more margin growth, quicker EPS growth? How are you thinking about it? Yeah, we look at this as an opportunity to think about how we can serve more consumers. And clearly we can do that uh, best at this point with disinfecting products. And I think that uh, the role that disinfecting products will play in people's lives is going to be altered forever. It's going to be elevated forever, at least for the foreseeable future. And we have an opportunity to invest in that, and um, that will hopefully deliver strong growth for the company. And because it's, as a business, a disinfecting business, about two times as profitable from an even margin perspective as our average business, that also means it gives us an opportunity to expand our margins, yes. You know, last one for you, Benno, and we've talked uh, in the past about leadership. You know, what has it been like for you as a leader to run a, a company that is, that is serving uh, the public in such an important important way and in, in such an important time uh, in the world's history? It's uh, difficult at the same time, uh, as it is for all CEOs, I would say, but it's also gratifying because the, the mission of our company uh, in 1913, yesterday actually, yesterday was our 107th birthday as a company. Happy birthday. Thank you, uh, proud history started by uh, making disinfecting products available uh, to the broad public in service of public health. And never has that mission been clearer than it is today. So uh, everybody at Clorox, including myself, all 8,800 8, employees are running a little faster, are giving everything they have, hearts and soul and minds in service of um, uh, public health and consumers and communities around the world. So, you know, whenever you feel like your world, your world and your work has a meaning, then that just means you're giving a little more. And I think uh, the, the the work that everybody does at Clorox right now has a little bit more meaning than it normally has already. So everybody's given their best, and I'm proud of everybody. All right, Ben Ardour, our chairman and CEO of Clorox. Uh, full disclosure: I've won a ton of your wipes. I'm constantly looking for your wipes. And on a personal note, I've talked to you uh, many times in the past. Get some sleep because I know you're doing some very important work at Clorox. Thank you, Brian, and thanks for buying the wipes. Appreciate <laughs> it. Stay safe.